Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV, this time for some Star Citizen. So what I'm going to be doing is putting together a beginner's guide, a step-by-step -step how to get started in the universe of Star Citizen. And what we're going to do first is begin with how to download the game. Anyway, I'll see you at their web page. Right, so you want to download the game, but it's not on Steam, it's not on Origin or any of those other uh, regular sites for buying games. You need to buy it from the developers directly. And to do that, you need to go to this website here, www.robertsspaceindustries.com. If you input that in the search bar, it will take you to this web page here. Now, this web page has all of the information about the game you could ever wish to come across. Um, latest com links where they let you know how the development is going. Spectrum, which is their forums where the developers and other community representatives can be spoken to directly. Videos, everything else. But what you're looking for is this button here, Fly Now Alpha 3.8, 3.9, 4.0, whatever the uh, development number is at that time. And you want to click on that. And then you get to choose your starter package. Now, if the two that they have on offer right now, I suggest strongly going for the Aurora MR. Um, if you come across a Mustang starter pack as well, the Mustang starter pack is well worth a look at. The Reliant Core is a little bit more expensive and to be honest i'm not so keen on the ship itself so what i did when i got the game is select the aurora mr for 45 dollars now this will give you a hanger it'll give you 1000 uec um, in-game currency three month insurance for your ship and obviously the game digital download for the online version of the game now if you're interested in the single player you can add squadron 42 to the package at a discount of only $20. If you're interested in the single player, I strongly suggest buying this together because that puts the total at $65. If you buy them individually, they're $45 each. So it's a really good discount. Then usual stuff here, check out, and then click on to enlist now. When you go to enlist now, the usual information, you want to input your login ID, your password, um, confirm your password, email address, birth date, your public information, and then here, if you have someone's referral code, and I'm gonna input mine here just so you have a look at it, you can input your referral code, uh, input a referral code, and you will get an extra 5,000 UEC in-game currency in the game. So instead of only having 1,000 to begin with, you have 6,000 to begin with. And obviously the person whose referral code you have used will get a little bit of an in-game kickback as well. There's no uh, actual direct money involved in it. It's all in-game bonuses. So yeah, I recommend doing that if you have someone's referral code. And I'll put in mine now just so you can see it. Okay, and there is my code, star. SLD3 WRT5. If you input this, you'll get an extra 5,000 UEC to begin with, and I will get a little bit of a bonus as well. Uh, my bonuses, I've only referred a couple of people, so I might, I think I'm up for getting a free set of guns in the game, which would be quite cool. Then, if you wish to receive the email updates, click here, and then click Enlist Now. Input your payment details, and you will be given the download link for the game. Okay, so once you have downloaded the game and opened the launcher and press play, you will be taken to this screen here with an amazing view of Microtech in the background. I love this wintry new landscape we have to play with. But you have three options staring you in the face straight away. Arena Commander, Star Marine and Universe. Now, brief introduction to uh, the three of them. Arena Commander and Star Marine are more arcadey game types. They're good places to practice your skills. So Arena Commander is the flight sim version where you can get involved in multiplayer battles or races or single player um, against bots um, or just single player on your own in a sort of zone where you can get used to flying. Star Marine is FPS and it's either um, PvP teams or PvP individual versus uh, all the other individuals there like a sort of battle royale environment. Um, Good fun as well and well worth doing just to improve your basic skills with how the FPS works in this game because it's a little bit different from other FPS games. But the main one we're looking at here is Universe. 
and you will be taken to this screen here where you can choose how your character looks. So what you want to do is cycle through the sources to find the type of person you want your character to look most like and then through all of these options here with this sort of blending option you can see how the two faces we have sort of blend together to create a new style of character. When you're happy with how your character looks have a quick look on review, check them out and then click accept. With character customization complete, you'll be wanting to jump straight into the verse and you'll be taken to this screen here, which allows you to do just that. Now, a quick note about hangers down here. I'm not going to focus on them. Currently, there is very little gameplay for hangers besides just spawning your ship and staring at it. It's very pretty, but there's nothing else to do there. Content will be coming later, but for now, I'm not going to focus on it at all. What instead I'm going to do is focus on spaceports because this will take you into the game. And so what we want to do is click on Stanton System. Before I look at all the information of Stanton System, I want you to take note of this thing here, which is region. This is your server region. Now, uh, because this is an alpha game, um, do expect some issues and server degradation can be one of those issues. It's worth taking note that you can switch between the USA, the EU and Australian servers for better performance, depending on the time of day and how busy those servers are. But for the Stanton system itself, you'll see that there are shopping and trade opportunities and there are also these different areas that you can visit, such as Port Olisar, Lawville Area 18, Rest and Relax Stations, Levski and Grim Hex. Um, it is also a relatively safe area in that only really Grim Hex is a particularly piratey location, but even then it has armistice zones. So you're safe, you know, taking off, uh, landing there, no one's gonna shoot you out. There's not gonna be much griefing at all. Um, but what we wanna do is click on visit location to take us into the game. And following a loading screen, you will end up in a bed not unlike this one. So how do you get out? Really rather simple. What you wanna do is look for the Y key on your keyboard, hit it, and your character will slide out of his bunk. Now, before we do anything else, I want you to take note of all the text on the left-hand side of the screen. This is the global chat. Um, if you do not wish to view it, what you can do is hit F12 and it will disappear. Now, next thing we're gonna do is take note of movement keys. So moving is your standard WASD. Um, so W for forward, S for backwards, A side step left, D side step right. And you can use the mouse cursor to turn around for vision, up, down, left, right, etc. Now, what you have in front of you is a door with a big glowing open sign. Anything that has that sort of yellow orangey glow to it can be interacted with. So if you hold down F, you'll be able to use interaction mode and it'll show what type of actions you can take. If there is only one, it's fine. Just left click it. If there's multiple, select the one you wish to choose and left click it and that action will happen. So we'll left click it to make sure we can leave. Now, I would like you to take note of something right now. If we hold, uh, if we press F4, we will be able to change our view. Now, my character, as you can see, is walking very, very slowly. We can change this by scrolling our mouse wheel up to speed up or scrolling it down to slow down again. OK, mouse wheel up to end up running, mouse wheel down to walk. Pick a speed that suits you best and head off to explore a little bit. Now, a lot of these doors will open of their own volition if you go near them, so you don't need to worry too much about using the inner thought mechanism to interact with it. Instead, just head up to them and they should just pop open like that. Now, like I said, this grim, grimy place is Levski. Whether you spawn here or Port Olisar or Grimhex or Hurston or Area 18, wherever, it doesn't matter. You will still have the same thing where you wake up in a bed, have to leave it, and then you'll need to find an area where you can go grab a ship. Now, in the bigger locations, you need to leave through the customs section. So look for signposts to customs, 
follow them, head through gates not dissimilar to this everywhere you go, and you will come across a terminal like this. This is called the ship retrieval console. So at the ship retrieval console, what you want to do is walk up to it, hold F for the interaction mode, left click for use, and search for the ship you want to grab. So we're looking for our RSI Aurora. It's already stored here at Levski. We move across to where it says retrieve, click it, and wait for them to tell us where it is. So, our ship is waiting at hangar 2, so we press S to back away, look for the signs for where we can get to the hangars, they are through these elevators here. We walk up, see the elevator button that's highlighted there, hold F, click to call elevator, and wait for the elevator to come. Now here you can see we have multiple options, we're looking for hangar 2, so we select hangar 2. Elevator door shut and will take us there. And if you see, that is our pip showing us where our RSI Aurora LN is. And it's 97 meters away, right in front of us. So we'll head through the lift and walk up to it. If you wish to move faster, what you can do is hold shift to break into a sprint. But you will notice that on the left hand side, our vitals that green number is starting to increase all the way up to 66 beats per minute. If you move too quickly, especially in heavy armor, your heart rate will increase to a stage where you can no longer cope and your character will black out or potentially even have a heart attack and die. So do take note of that. Now, here is our lovely ship, but how do we get in it? First of all, we need to look for a door. Now for the RSI Aurora, it's pretty obvious that this is the door, but on other ships, it's a little less obvious. One of the easiest ways to find out is to hold interaction mode button F down and just have a quick scan of the area. The door will highlight itself and then you'll be given these options to enter the ship, open door or open the ladder. We want to get in the ship, so what we're going to do, select enter ship, everything will kick up and our character will jump into the ship automatically. In front of us is the pilot seat. So again, interaction mode F, enter pilot seat, and our character will squeeze past into the seat. But as you can see, none of the power is on, all the lights are off. What we can do to quickly get the ship ready to fly is to hit the R key. And you'll see everything has appeared. Enjoy the ride. System check. Now, if you want to have a quick look at everything on these screens, what you can do is hold F for interaction mode and you will see that you have lots of different options. Spool, quantum drive, engines on and off, open exterior, press to unlock, all of these menus that you can click on and check and change things, comms links, everything. You just select it with your cursor, click the one you want and it will pop up. Pretty useful. but. We need to leave this place now before they give us a crime stat for sitting on a parking bay. Unfortunately, the hangar doors are shut, so we need to speak to Levski Landing Control to encourage them to open the doors for us. The way we're going to do that is by hitting F1 to enter our Moby Glass. From here, we're going to look for the comm link, which is the far left button at the bottom. Click on that. And then we're going to head up to Contacts here. Click that, Levski Landing Control, click again, and it'll hail them. You're free to launch. As soon as she says we're free to launch, we're good to press F1 to exit this menu, and then hold space to take off. And there we go, out of the hangar. You fly safe, okay? Thank you very much. Now if I press F4 and hold Z to enable free look, you can see that my landing gear is still down. The way how we get the landing gear to raise is to hit N. There we go. Now we're free to fly away.
Now, if you hold W just like you would for movement, you will start to accelerate. But you will notice that we can only reach up to 137, 138 meters per second in speed. To increase our speed, the same as when we're on the ground, we use the mouse cursor, uh, the mouse wheel, sorry, to scroll up for extra speed or scroll down to slow down. Now you'll notice that it went red as we went past a certain speed. That is because there is a maximum tolerance your ship can take before systems start to overheat. So bear that in mind when traveling quickly. You'll also notice that if you let go of W, your ship will slow down to a halt. One of the things you can do to uh, prevent yourself from needing to hold down W to go everywhere is to hit the C button. This will enable a sort of cruise control where your ship will go to the speed you have set it to uh, go at. So if I say I want to travel at 201 meters per second, it will hold it at 201 meters per second. If I say I want to be less, it'll go down to less. Should you wish to turn that off, just hit C again and your ship will slow to a halt. Now, otherwise, ship controls are pretty similar to how it works on ground, where W is forward, S, although is not straight up backwards, um, but it will slow you down. A allows you to shift to one side. D allows you to shift to the other side. As you move, you can see we're moving very slowly to the right right now. And if you hold S when you're in a stopped position, you'll be able to travel backwards with your boosters. But of course, now we've got this ship and we're leaving Levski, we don't want to hang around here. We want to find a new destination where we can pick up some missions. So what we're going to do is hit F2 to take us to the star map on the Moby Gloss and scroll out with the mouse wheel. Keep scrolling out and you can see Delamar. This is where Levski is, but we want to be even further out than that. So we'll keep scrolling back and scrolling back and scrolling back until we start to see the greater picture. And here we go. Now we want to head over to, let's say, let's head over to Hurston L3. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that and set route. The route here has been set. You can see Hurston L3, there's the fuel required. There's the current fuel we have. We press F2 to leave this, and then we're going to press B to start spooling our quantum drive and look for this little triangle up in the top of our screen to find where we need to head off to. And there we have it. When you end up going over it, you'll see our ship starts to calibrate. When the calibration is complete and the spooling is complete, what you need to do then is to hold B and your ship will begin to hit quantum drive. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you wake up on a new planet, find your ship, and set off on your first flight. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed this first stage tutorial for Star Citizen. If you have, please feel free to leave a like and comment down below. It means the world to me. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we talk about how to complete our very first mission. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.